collaborate with students from other faculties such as biology, chemistry, and forestry would provide us with an opportunity to better understand those impact categories. And now I'm going to pass it on, oh, to Rob, yes. Um, he's gonna talk about education and engagement, which is the next step for LCA. Hi, Okay, so now that we have uh, all this information, so now the idea is that we want to uh, get everybody involved and have uh, kind of to spread the knowledge more so than just this presentation, which can kind of go beyond that. So ideally, we're looking at um, everything from like a, global, a local to a global perspective. So um, we're looking at uh, like the UBC uh, population and, um, and uh, informing and educating uh, the, like the students and faculty um, I mean, just basically some of the more senior decision makers. And also getting other institutes involved, um, integrating LCA into the Green Report Card. The Green Report Card is essentially a mark that is given to the different uh, campuses across uh, Canada. And currently, UBC is the best among the Canadian universities with an A minus. And uh, we also would like to, uh, to get uh, the current professionals, in, like in uh, architecture and engineering and corporations and uh, manufacturing, as, uh, as if we can uh, implement uh, LCA into uh, like practices and design and consulting, then essentially uh, we make the, we can um, reduce like the, uh, the impacts that we have on the environment based on the, based, uh, improving the cycle. And, uh, and getting the uh, different levels of government involved as well as, uh, as they make the policies and uh, as we've seen in giving uh, tax breaks and, um, and benefits to, uh, to people that uh, use um, greener appliances and uh, just basically using uh, better uh, types of material in the building which, uh, which can save energy and save money in the long run. So, uh, so essentially just uh, to uh, Implement uh, implement these practices into the codes and standards. So, how would you plan on uh, engaging everyone into uh, into LCA? Is that uh, we would be showing uh, uh, show the improvements and show the performances of, of the buildings that, uh, like the twenty nine that we've already modeled up to this point. So now, uh, just by demonstrating that we can do it here on campus with the um, with the different uh, cloud, the Buildings that we have, um, we can um, yeah. We, like these these results are actually online, so you can actually see the reports of the um, of the buildings that have already been modeled. And uh, and for the professionals out there, and for the corporations and manufacturers, so they, they we could uh, implement um, seminars of, of professional development and uh, different workshops. So by uh, demonstrating the um, the methodology and uh, and the application of LCA, then essentially we're giving power to this, and, and this will make this uh, a lot more um, uh, uh, efficient and make, make it all make it more effective. So, uh, with that, uh, here's Amy to uh, conclude the presentation. Thank you. Okay, so as you guys have seen up until now, uh, our study was basically a cradle to gate assessment of the structural structure and envelope of 29 academic buildings on UBC campus. Um, we used two types of software on screen to do our takeoffs and Athena to generate the uh, environmental impacts and of course with unlimited student patience to <laughs> finish all of the models. Um, but now we have a great database. Uh, the results of our project. Um, this project has really enabled us to have an inventory of all the building materials. So we talked about the stock of materials at UBC here, um, and we're able to quantify the environmental impacts that those materials have. Uh, we're also, we were able to examine the role of building construction materials uh, and the magnitude of their impacts and how each of them affected differently. So looking at the t how much concrete versus how much wood and the impacts of those depending on material. Um, we also looked at different functions. So the results we presented to you guys were square footage of academic building, but as we discussed, you know, looking at classrooms or how many offices and the different functions of the building and how that connects with the impact that the building has. Um, and last but not least, like, we did emphasize that it is cradle the gate and it's just structure and envelope, so there are definitely limitations to our study and assumptions. 
Um, but regardless, we have a lot of great uh, applications that we talked about. Um, to briefly go over those, uh, by determining profiles for over 50% of the buildings on campus, uh, we essentially created a database. So this database is really can be useful for summarizing our impacts and comparing buildings. Uh, taking that comparison further, uh, we can look at the effectiveness. Uh, so Kip talked about the lead buildings and comparing, you know, from a business standpoint, are we putting our money into the right place? Like, are we actually being greener by, you know, lead certifying buildings and quantifying that data? Um, uh, also, we <laughs> looked at uh, greenhouse gas emissions, uh, was also touched on. Um, so our mandate of trying to become carbon neutral by 2050. Uh, our study extends the scope of the greenhouse gases that UBC is responsible for, because now we know the greenhouse gas emissions associated with the buildings on campus. Um, policies and programs, uh, basically decision making. A lot of discussion was based around uh, renovation versus new construction and how green those activities actually are and to be able to quantify that data. Um, so in terms of high level decision making with the UBC Renew program, for example, uh, aimed at avoid, avoiding environmental impacts, preventing those emissions. Um, our study, our models could be used as a starting point. Uh, we already have, okay, if you were to do a renovation on a building, take, take the model that's already existing, so we're kind of expediting the decision making process if they can use our models. Um, Recommendations for our study. Uh, we talked about expanding the scope of the study. So we did look at just manufacturing and construction, and we did just look at uh, the structure and envelope of the building. But what if we took that further? What if we started looking at maintenance and operation and energy usage? And what if we started looking at decommission? So again, tying back into the you know, renovation of buildings versus decommission. Um, and we also looked at uh, expanding or quantifying our uncertainties. So it's just really important to make sure there's a lot of transparency in these studies because that's how they'll be useful, like, to understand the limitations of that. Um, and education um, is the point. Like really, we want to spread the knowledge of LCA to not only the UBC community and how it can be applied, but to the wider community, from students and staff to talking about industry professionals um, and even government. And that's where policy making and decision making on a wider scale comes in because as Rob mentioned at the very beginning, we all have an impact. Every product we use and everything we do has an impact. So to be able to quantify that and just even propagate individual consideration for the environment and to start thinking about the life cycle of everything that you use and the effect that it has. Um, and that's where engagement becomes really important. So not only do we want to increase awareness, I guess, of everyone to start thinking about it and getting kind of get the ball rolling and really just use you know, opportunities like today's presentation um, to facilitate discussions surrounding <coughs> sustainable buildings and uh, everything that we can do to quantify how green we really are. Um, so thanks once again for coming today, um, and we'd love to discuss what the material was in today and uh, anything beyond that. So I guess, well, if you have anything else to say, otherwise we'll open the floor to questions. No. Some of the people that helped make this course happen because this course is not just me uh we have brenda swada from seeds because this is a seeds program we've got a great deal of support from her alison aluzio from the sustainability office uh Su susan nesbitt and thomas froze who may not be here right now but they were huge parts of making this all happen eric was part of this as well he's attended the course and, and it's great to have professors getting interested in this as well um and also we got uh software developers uh, uh sorry we've got athena to the, donate all the, the course material, so all the software used was given to us by private companies, so on-screen center, on-center uh, software, and, um, and the Athena Institute in Ottawa, and Morrison Hirschfeld, and also half of the drawings were covered by the uh, infrastructure planning, John Metris, anywhere? Anyway, John Metris, great help, Rob Agnew, and the records department, those guys are a great team, and they really helped this happen, and of course, all these students, because, uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> it was a lot of work, and it was really great, so. I'm gonna get a little emotional. It's a bit of a big deal for me for this. You know, it's happened. So thank you guys. That was a great presentation. Uh, a little bit of nerves in here, but I think all in all, it was a really great effort, and I really see this going somewhere. So thank you guys. Thank you guys all for coming.